All right, school district in Texas refusing to air President Obama's back to school message uh, this yesterday, but uh, hearing from former President Bush for some reason a very different story. Contessa has more. Uh, Contessa. Yeah, Dylan, it's raising some eyebrows inside the community of Arlington, Texas. And one pastor is calling on school officials to explain what he calls the duplicity in this situation. The deal is the Arlington Independent School District passed on airing Obama's speech, but has now announced it will be letting its students hear from former President Bush. In fact, they're loading a bunch of fifth graders onto buses, sending them to Cowboy Stadium for the event later this month. It's part of the Super Bowl Committee's youth education program. You know, this is the same district that decided against broadcasting the current president's message on education yesterday because of parental concerns. One note, kids who got permission from their parents were allowed to watch Obama's speech off campus, and they'll need parental permission to go to the Bush event as well. So obviously we're politicizing our children. I could pose that as a question, but it seems rather obvious when you one and the other. <laughs> anyway, the question is, what does this do to the children, I suppose? Or that's the question we're asking right now. Jeff Gardier, uh, back with us. When you start to utilize your children as a, as a vehicle of political expression. Yeah. Good thing, bad thing, does this get him involved earlier? And you're like, yeah, yeah, I don't like Obama, but I do like Bush, or I do like Bush, I don't like, in other words, does that get him involved earlier? Does that kind of confuse the... I, I think, the, I think it's them? a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing in what you're saying, yes, you get him involved earlier, they start learning about politics. The bad thing is, we as parents, psychologically, have a hard time uh, individuating from our children, letting them have independence of thought. And I think the other bad thing is, look, the bottom line is that a lot of these folks think that this president is a social socialist. Uh, they're uh, uh, striking fear into the hearts of their children and into their neighbors. And I think now we're seeing a division in this country about this president right. because of some of his beliefs that are not socialist, yeah. but he is moving quickly. And that's a culture shock yeah. for a lot of folks. What I, particularly if you look at the Bush-Obama comparison and, any of the, this, the, the, and the socialist anxiety, what I find ironic in that is the totality of the policies in the banking system and the auto system were instituted under George Bush, which means if you believe Obama is a socialist, for his banking and automotive bailout policies. By definition, George Bush is the socialist who created the socialist policies that Obama, if nothing else, is guilty of perpetuating, although he didn't create any of them. Well, is there I, an irony I, there? The, the, well, the or is irony, it just because it, when is it different? What's, why, how could one guy be a socialist and the other guy? That's well, the irony here is that there's a real backlash against this president. And I think what people are not talking about... But it's made is, up. Well, is, is this issue of a culture shock. It is absolutely grand in this great country of ours that we have a president who happens to be black. I don't think people have digested that as yet. And because they have not, he is moving very quickly, as I said earlier. So for them to be able to deal with a black president and one who's moving to change policies in such a quick way, in such a broad way, I think is very difficult for people to deal with. And I think we have to look at it in that way. Well, so you're saying that you think people are angry to watch a, a, a black president and how, I'm, I'm confused by that. In other words, this think, guy's been in the think, job for eight months. I think, they're, I think they're very anxious. It's a lot for them to be able to deal with. Notice I didn't say the word race. I didn't say the word I prejudice understand. because I don't think that's what it's about. I just think that we have to give people the time and the psychological space to be able to acknowledge and understand that we have a person who is president, who is black, and there is still racism in this world, not necessarily against this person, Person, but they have preconceived notions as to who people of color are, and now he's the top cat. How do you deal with that? And the preconceived notions suggest that, that the value system of somebody who is black is different implicitly than the, the value system of somebody who's not black, which inherently strikes me as absurd. But is that what you're suggesting? Well, I think, that, 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 I, I think the important thing is that we shouldn't paint people as being evil or bad because they may have preconceived notions as to issues of color. It just happens to be the way it is. Even this president president does not address race. He did that with uh, with uh, Reverend Jeremiah um, Right. Right. Uh, you're That's right. Why we're together. That's right. So we're right, fine. right, yeah. right, right. But that was the only time he came out and spoke about race because even this president knows he has made his statement being black. He doesn't need to say anything else about race because he knows that the country is not quite ready for it. And I think this is what we're seeing in this particular issue, uh, along with the whole uh, uh, policies that he's trying to get as far as health care. I think yeah. that's where you're seeing the back. Jonathan, quickly.
uh, what I wanted to add to what Jeff said is that let's understand the people who are squawking the most. These are the folks who are, are on the far right, uh, conservative wing of the Republican Party. These are folks who didn't vote for Barack Obama, who probably haven't voted for a Democrat in a very long time. And I think it's part of the reason why the Republican Party will remain a regional party uh, un unless it can pull the moderates from, you know, behind the curtains and who, who have been hiding, uh, sort of afraid of these far right conservatives. Uh, you know, until that happens, the Republicans will remain just a regional party, a reactionary party, which is what exactly what we're seeing. Yep. All right, uh, Jonathan, thank you so much, uh, Doctor. All right, it's a pleasure. You. Nice you. to see you. Happy and September. I noticed, uh, and I noticed Jonathan didn't say anything about race, but yeah. he really did say something about yeah. race. He just didn't use the word. It's because he's brilliant. He is. The a thing brilliant with Capehart is that he's very smart. He is, the and man. as a result, it differentiates. And him. a nice smile yeah. too. Hey,